Hey there, everybody. Let's talk about a vector problem from the vector UT homework set. A particle undergoes two displacements measured uh, along the positive x-axis, I mean, relative to the positive x-axis, with counterclockwise as positive. The first has a magnitude of some number and has an angle of some value with respect to the x-axis and the resultant so they didn't tell us the second vector they told us the resultant the resultant displacement has a certain magnitude and a certain angle so what that means is this is how far let's say it was a bug walking along the wall the bug walks this far then we look away and when we look back the bug is now right here well, what that means is that the the bug must have walked a second must have a second displacement right here so if we call this vector a and this vector b and down here is the resultant vector C. What we saw before we looked away is the bug had come to here and it was at this point. And then we looked away for a little while and now we know the bug is there. So we have its displacement from our original measuring point and we have, we know how far it went in, in its first leg of its journey, but we don't know the second one. So assuming it walked in a straight line, what is that vector B? We wanna know what, how far did it go from this tip of this vector to that vector? So it's A plus B equals C. So what we're going to do, though, in order to figure out the vector B is we're going to find the components of the other two. So what we're going to do is take the Y component of the A vector and the X component of the A vector, and then we're going to take the X component of C, and we're going to take the Y component of C. So we're going to take these guys and add them together. So this one added with this one, that'll be the X component of our, uh, sorry, this plus this will be the X component of the unknown. And this plus this will be the Y component of the unknown relative to the origin. So you can see there's a, a like a tiny difference in the, the vector length right there. And another thing that you should notice is this is a plus X and this is a minus X. So we wanna make sure to account for that when we're uh, making this work. And I'm going to start with the actual vectors literally in here, just to give you a sense of how it would work. So this was, um, well, we know it had a length of 11 and an angle of, let's switch back. It has an angle of uh, 63 and a length of 11. So 63, we're really close to that. Let's see if I can get exact. I bet I can't. 63 and a length of 11. I mean, it's not too important that we're exact because we're gonna we're about to have software do this. That's that's not too bad. So here's a, and what we're saying here is there must be a second vector b that exists like so. And again, we're not being exact. I'm just kind of rounding so that if I turn on the sum, we end up with this vector here, right? So as a matter of fact, wait. Let's do that. Why didn't quite work? Oh, I had, I had it off the origin. There we go. So there's a, there's the result in which they told us in the problem, what we're looking for is B. And again, I'm not being exact with these values. So don't use these. We are going to use Desmos though, to uh, help us out. So let's do that. Let's take vector, the first guy here, A, and we know that it has a certain length, which I think was 11 meters. You know, let me scroll up and get the exact value. So it's 11 meters, so we know that precisely. And we know that relative to the positive x-axis, the angle for A, that's, a, you know what, that's a mess. Theta A, there we go, was uh, 63 degrees. And our resultant, which I'm calling C, has a length of 8.8 .8 meters. 8.8 .8 meters, and the angle is 103. So theta sub c is 103. And again, this is relative to the x-axis. So I want to remind you that very often when you're using a computer to represent vectors, we tr we have to be mindful of the way the, the various trig functions work in the different quadrants. If you're in the first quadrant, everything's great. But once you get to quadrant three, things can be tricky. So what we do is if the vector is anywhere between plus X and minus X in the first or second quadrant, that angle is going to be measured from zero to 180 degrees. But if the if the vector ends up down in the uh, third or fourth quadrants, we start at zero, but we sweep negatively towards negative 180. So we're, we're going to be careful uh, about that. And I specifically wanted to show one where that happened. 
So, um, okay, so what we know is that in the, the vector equation is C equals A plus B, but this guy is known, this guy is known, so what we're really looking for is B. Remember, this is vector algebra, not normal average everyday addition, but, um, well, I guess it's not algebra as much as it is vector addition. So the vector B is going to equal then the vector C minus A. Well, we know immediately if we can get to the components, we're good to go. So I know how to find B if I know it's two components. And I know that if I am looking for the X component of B, I can take the X component of C and subtract the X component of A. And the same for Y. I can take the Y component of C and subtract the, the Y component of A, and I'm good to go. So that also tells me we're looking for number six, by the way, is looking for the magnitude. Seven is looking for the angle. But in order to find the magnitude, the length of the vector B, which I usually just write without an arrow on it, is just going to be the square root of the sum of the squares, as in BX squared plus BY squared, and then take its square root. So that's going to be the magnitude. And then the angle, theta B, is going to be the arctan. Now remember, we got to be careful about the third quadrant, but it's going to be the arctan of by divided by bx. My parenthesis is kind of a mess right there. So these are our two answers, but uh, we need to do more work. We got to break this down. So just as a reminder over here, let's do some trig before we move over to Desmos. We know that the x component of a is the length of the a vector. Again, I just leave the arrow off times the cosine, if it's the x component, and the y component is the length of a times the sine, and then the c sub x component, same deal, the length of c times cosine, and the y component of c is the length of c times sine. Now look, these that I've written here, this I can finally get to the point, because I know theta and I know the length. So I now am at a situation where I can actually solve these in almost like a, a computational way, which is actually what we're going to do with Desmos. Because once I've got all of these guys as my inputs, I know that theta and A, well, this should be theta A, I guess. And this should be theta C, because we have two different angles. So once we know the two angles and the two lengths, we can plug them into something to generate our components. And then we can do the rest of these steps to actually figure out our answer. So let's do that. Let's switch over to Desmos and do that very thing. So the first thing we need is uh, the angle for A, which I've already forgotten what it was. So forgive me. The angle for A is 63 degrees. And again, this is just my version of the problem. Oh, we need to make sure Desmos is in degrees. It is. OK, so that's good. Um, and then we're going to do the length of A was, I think, 11, but I'm going to read it anyway. It's 11. And then theta C, this was our resultant, was um, 103 degrees. Again, being careful about making sure you're in degrees and noting what quadrant you're in. And the length of C, which I've totally forgotten, is 8.8. So now what we're doing here is setting this up in such a way that all you would need to do is change your values, uh, change these variables to your values, and we actually have all the inputs we need. But we need to get the components, so let's do that. So A sub X equals A times sine of theta A. All right, good. And A, oh, wait, that's, I think I got that backwards. This should be cosine. It's easy to mess those up. And the Y component should be sine. So a sub y equals a times sine of theta a. Always check your work. Like I wasn't, I'm talking while I do this, and it's easy to mess it up. So let's see if I can get the x component of the c right. That would be the length of c times the cosine, soka toa. And that was theta sub c. Oh, I got two c's in there. We don't want to square it. So c times co uh, cosine of c is the x component. And C sub Y is the length of C times the, oops, times the um, sine of theta C. There we go. So let's verify. The X component is cosine, the Y component is sine. The X component is cosine, the Y component is sine. Okay. And notice that Desmos has already done a bunch of math for me. And uh, I don't even really care what those values are because I, I trust my inputs are right and I've checked my trig, trig functions and I know I'm in degrees. I'm feeling pretty good. So I feel like we're there. So what we're looking for first for number six is what is the length of C? So what is, I'm sorry, what is the length of B? 
And let's go back. Oh, I zoomed way in there. Let's go back and look at our notes. Uh, let's make sure we're good. We have AX, AY, CX, CY. We got all that. So now we need to do this step right here. We need to make sure to actually find the components of B. Then we can do this step right here. Okay, so let's do that. So B sub X, which is the one that I'm missing and don't know, is going to be C sub X minus A sub X. And if we did not stop to think about it as a vector relationship, we might mess that up. So B is equal to C minus A when we're doing our vector math. So for B, Y. We're going to take the C, the, the uh, resultant's Y, and we're going to subtract the known vector's Y. And now we actually have the X component of the unknown one and the Y component of the unknown one. So remember what happened is a, oh wait, let's look at the picture yeah, up here. What happened is a bug started at the corner down here of our wall and walked all the way up there. Then we looked away and we see the bug over here now a certain distance from the corner. What we're looking for is how far did the bug move here? Remember, B is what we're looking for. We know A, we know the result in C, we don't know B. That's what we're doing. So we've, we've broken everything into the components, the two components of X and Y for A and X and Y for C, so that we can find our answer, the components of uh, the unknown. So that means the length, which this is number six, is the square root of the sum of the squares. So the square root of BX squared, plus b y squared. And I would also point out, you could plug in these whole algebraic statements, but I feel like it maybe is a little bit more sort of obvious to, um, or at least clear for me to do the, to do the values piece at a time. So this is literally saying the length of b is the Pythagorean theorem for the um, x squared plus y squared. So I like that better. And then um, let's do theta b, which is, this is number seven. We're looking for the angle. That would be the arctan. You could also do inverse tan, uh, but I like writing the words arctan for some stupid reason. And then it's the y component of your vector divided by the x component. So that's another thing you need to, to remember is in Sokotoa, uh, you need to know that it's uh, for sine, you're dealing with the y component of your right triangle. For cosine, you're dealing with the x component, but for tan, it's y over x. So um, now look, there's something problematic or dangerous about this. If we look back at our problem, you can see that B should have a negative angle. Somewhere, like if this is Z, uh, uh, negative 180 over here and this is zero, that's way over. So this would be negative 90. This would be like 135. That's way more than that. So we got a problem. So reminder, when you do tangent, it automatically does it in the, the it thinks you're doing it in the first quadrant. So what I'm going to do here is say theta B, which is the number I actually got, minus 180, and then I get 170. And if I look back at my drawing, yeah, this looks more like negative 170 to me. So I am did a little sense making there. It looks like number six for the numbers I have in front of me is 9.98. We're going to round it to the hundredth place, meters. And the um, angle is negative 170, or 170.02 if you want to be a little bit exact. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Thanks for watching.